Welcome back. It's that time of the morning to check in with Bob Bolsold to see what's happening in the crop world. When he pops up, there he is. Look at that. Hey, it's like magic. I know. It Who'd is. have thought? It's Bob in the box. Just keep <laughs> spinning it. And he'll pop out eventually. Oh my I liked it. Bob in the box. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, I got here, and I forgot to put on my red and white today for the Badger game tonight. But go Bucky. Hopefully they can win another one. Beat the mean green. Yeah, beat the mean green. That's for sure. Well, let's, I know the weather's going to be better in Las Vegas than it is here. So uh, hopefully a lot of folks get out there to watch it and have fun. Let's take a look at what's going on now. Last week's USDA Plant and Animal Health Inspection Service Administrator, Kevin Shea, shared the case breakdown of avian influenza from this past year. Shea presented numbers to state agriculture directors and commissioners that show between February of last year and January 31st of this year, there have been 748 detections, 314 of those in commercial flocks, 434 in backyard flocks. That's avian influenza in poultry across the United States. He also shared... There was a resurgent this past fall of avian influenza detections of 298 throughout the U.S., different from anything we'd ever seen in the fall in this country. And again, getting to spring, those migrating birds are starting to come back, those wild birds. Well, tariffs always in the news, and as the Philippines review their import tariffs, the U.S. Meat Export Federation seeks tariff relief for U.S. pork law in 2021, the Philippines started reducing their tariffs in an effort to battle inflation and put a dent in the pork shortage caused by African swine fever outbreaks in the Philippines. Imports enjoyed a reduced tariff rate of 15%, which added 200,000 metric tons of pork to the 54,000 metric ton quota. Now, the Philippines extended that tariff reduction in 2022, but the quota volume was not increased, bringing the new tariff rate to 25 percent that's the highest rate of the major importing countries african swine fever is still spreading in the philippines so hopefully their government will extend the tariff reductions for a longer period of time the u.s meat export federation points out that lower tariff rates help to grow demand and that's good for both domestic and global pork industries last week there was some promising news concerning food price inflation USDA economist Matt McLachlan estimated that food inflation to be 8.5% in March 2023, but he has since dropped that inflation number down to 7.8%. Every little bit helps. Prices for fresh fruits, vegetables, and meat have been lower than expected this year and are predicted to keep falling. Inflation trends do seem to be cooling a little bit, but there is still a wide range of increases anywhere from 5 to 10.5% higher by the end of the year. And today is the first day of the WPS Farm Show held at the EAA grounds over in Oshkosh. The show runs for the next three days from 9 to 4 on Tuesday and Wednesday and 9 to 3 on Thursday. As always, the show will feature new agricultural technologies from over 400 exhibitors from the U.S. and Canada they're going to have FFA silent auctions, health screenings, much more. Parking is 5 bucks, but admission to the show is free. Well, let's go to the market board where the markets were actually higher yesterday. More corn sales, and the traders are getting a little less jittery about this bank situation. Overnight, looking at the July prices, though, they did go down a little bit. July corn, 2 to 3 cents lower at 627. The wheat down 4 cents at 705. Soybeans down a penny. As far as dairy products are concerned, barrel cheese, block cheese, butter, all traded unchanged yesterday in Chicago. But we can't say the same about Class 3 milk futures. Those Class 3 futures did go down. March down 3 cents to 1807. April down 17. May down a dime as those prices were mixed the summer and fall out through January. So that's where we are today, and hopefully Bucky can bring home a win and Getting close to the start of uh, the baseball season. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be cool in Chicago on Thursday, though. You know, it's going to be in the 50s, they're saying. Is it really then, good for them? And then they're, they're, the, the makeup rainout date is was scheduled for Friday, so but it's supposed to rain there all day, so it's probably a good thing they're playing Thursday. I guess it is. And then it might get to be in the 50s near 60 on Sunday with the wind blowing out. Can oh, you boy. believe that? <laughs> One of those 19 to 17 yes. games that we've seen so much. Yes. So, oh, well, it's a good sports week.
Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs>